So welcome to the lesson on introduction to Kubernetes. I'm going to talk about what Kubernetes really is, what does it do, and how does it solve problems when it comes to scaling our applications. So before I get into the actual Kubernetes, I want to talk about containers one more time because they're very important. Containers are a solution to the problem of how to get software to run reliably when moved from one computing environment to another, which is great. This could be from, again, your developer's laptop to a test environment, from a staging environment into production, and perhaps even from a physical machine in a data center to a VM in a private or public cloud. So we talked about containers earlier, right? But just a refresher on what they are and what problem they solve. So how do they really solve these problems? A container consists of an entire runtime environment. So for example, it'll have the application, plus all of its dependencies, the libraries and other binaries, as well as configuration files needed to run it, all bundled into one package. By containerizing the application platform and its dependencies, differences in OS distributions and underlying infrastructure are abstracted away. Okay, so you just create a box, you put everything in a box, and you ship it to a platform. Containers are great, as I mentioned earlier, but what's next? A few words on containers. Technically speaking, containers are a new mode to IT. Obviously, they're new and they're growing. Containers are making us think how we deliver software, unlike the conventional methods. Containers live only inside the Linux kernel, and they are nothing but control groups and kernel namespaces. So here's a shortcoming of a container, right? So how does a container know, for example, if my application needs to span five data centers? Well, simple answer is it doesn't really know that aspect. All it knows is what's in the box, okay? And that's important to understand and differentiate or take a look at what containers can't really do. You may have millions of containers sitting there with each having its own space with its own dependencies, app, code, and everything in it, but that's about it. So how do you scale out your highly resilient app? We need Kubernetes to do that, okay? So let's say you have a cluster running and you have all these containers within that cluster. And now you need to scale out your application. Well, containers can't really do it by themselves, so we need a tool called Kubernetes. It's an open source, and we'll talk about next what Kubernetes really is. But I wanted to differentiate and make you understand the actual concept of containers and how Kubernetes comes into the picture. So. Kubernetes is an open source system for automating deployment, scaling, and management of containerized applications. Okay, that's important. What it does, it groups containers that make up an application into logical units for easy management and discovery. It's an open source container orchestration and provides broad industry support and also supports the multi-cloud environment, on-premise VM, bare metal, and so on. So, more importantly, just understand and know and remember that Kubernetes is an open source system for automating deployment of your apps, scaling your apps, and management of containers. So a few words and terminology that Kubernetes uses and we'll be using these terms, in fact, working with these within this course. So a container, again, is a sealed application package, right? And I demonstrated earlier how to download, install Docker, and how to create containers and images, right? And then pod is simply a small group of tightly coupled containers. So you take those containers and you create a pod. Labels identify metadata attached to objects. Selector is simply a query against these labels, producing a set result. A controller, which is a reconciliation loop, that drives current state towards the desired state. So as the word suggests, it controls, right? And service is a set of pods that work together. 
a new concept in Kubernetes or new terminology is the pod, right? So all we do is we create these pods, which are just a bunch of these containers, bunch of these boxes, and each box again contains its own set of code, right? So you, you may have a box or a container that can have a Node.js application and another box that may have Ruby on Rails and so on, another one with Java, another one with WordPress and so on. So you take all these containers and you group them together into something called a pod. And then of course you create labels, right, to identify and then you can use the selector to query against these labels, find out all these labels. Because keep in mind that these containers can be millions, right? Google again creates two billion containers a week. So we need some kind of management areas, right? So Kubernetes is all about managing your containers. So therefore, it comes up with pods, label, selector, controller, and service. So in conclusion, containers, we talked about them, what they are, or the shortcomings of these containers. They're simply kernel namespaces. They can't really do anything on their own. They cannot scale themselves. So we need Kubernetes to do that, right? And we also talked about how Kubernetes is useful in scaling these applications. And of course, a few new terms such as pods, service, labels, as far as Kubernetes is concerned, we talked about those as well. So go over some of these terms, understand them. Before I end this lesson, I'm going to go online and show you how to get to Kubernetes and what does it look like. So let me switch back to my browser here. So once I'm in my Chrome browser, simply Google something called Kubernetes. And the first link, you'll see the URL, which is kubernetes.io. Okay, so click on the first URL and this will take you to the home page of Kubernetes where you can read about it, what it is, what does it do. Once again, it's just an automated container deployment, scaling and management. Okay, it's an open source so you can go on GitHub and take a look at the code itself. And of course you can scroll down and read about it and understand more what Kubernetes really is. So for example, if I were to bring up the GitHub here, Notice you can view on GitHub, so I'm going to click on it and take you to GitHub and actually show you the code. So here is where you can take a look at, you can clone or download okay, Kubernetes as a zip file, or you can use Git or check out with SVN. In this lesson, just wanted to demonstrate the actual concept of Kubernetes and how does it work, how does it solve our problems when it comes to scaling these applications. So I hope this helps, and let's move to the next lesson.